Hello, in this video we're going to go over this sequence problem that was proposed by one of the users on my YouTube channel. Determine if there is a sequence of positive integers a n with n greater than or equal to 1 that satisfy both of the following conditions. The first condition is for every two positive integers m and n, we have a sub m plus n is less than or equal to a sub m plus a sub n and a sub m n is less than or equal to a m times a n. And the second condition is for every positive integer k, there are infinitely many indices m with a sub m equals k. It means in the sequence you have infinitely many 1s, infinitely many 2s, infinitely many 3s, and so on. So these types of questions are typically difficult because we don't actually know the answer to the question. Is there or is there not a sequence like that? So that adds to the difficulty of the problem. Generally speaking, the way I start solving these types of problems is to try to construct a sequence and then if I am able to construct then I'm done and if I'm not able to construct then I get some intuition into why such a sequence does not exist and hopefully I can turn that intuition into a proof. So let's just start with looking at the conditions and trying to construct some sequence. Let's just start with some small numbers so we have infinitely many ones so we have one in this sequence infinitely many times. Now if you have a n and a m are both one then using the first condition we know that a sub m plus n is at most one plus one which is two. So that tells us a sub m plus n would be either one or two. And if I look at a sub m times n that's at most a m times a n and this is one. So this gives us actually a better inequality. So this tells us that if you have m and n that that at those indices we get 1 then a sub m n is also 1. So what does that mean? It means if I take a set s that is all of the n's that a n is 1 then this is closed under multiplication. So if you take two numbers that satisfy a n equals 1 then the product must also satisfy the same thing. That made me think of maybe power of a prime might be a good way of choosing this s. Because I want s to be an infinite set, I thought how about if I take s to be the set of all powers of 2, 0, 1, and etc. If I look at a sub 2 to the k plus 2 to the l, I would have to have a sub 2 to the k plus a sub 2 to the l I know both of these are 1, I chose them to be 1, so that would have to be 2. So it means a sub 2 to the power of k plus a sub 2 to the power of l must be at most 2. And similarly, if I take a sub 2 to the power of k plus 2 to the power of l plus 2 to the power of r, that would be at most 3. Okay, so at this point, it became clear to me that it has something to do with base 2 representation of a number. So now, I basically got to a solution. So let's define a sub n to be the number of non-zero digits of n in base 2. If I write down n in base 2, I get a bunch of 1s and a bunch of zeros. I'm going to count the number of 1s and I would call that a n. So to simplify the notation, let me call this one f of n and let's prove the inequality for f of n. So define f to be from positive integers to positive integers by the same thing f of n equals a sub n. Now by induction on k we will show that f of 2 to the power of c1 plus 2 to the power of ck is at most k if c1 through ck are non-negative integers. So we will show that by induction. How do we show that? So let's assume that c1 through ck are in this order. Now if all of them are distinct then we are done. If c1 is less than c2 
less than CK, then F of 2 to the power of C1 all the way to 2 to the power of CK is exactly K because there are exactly K ones in the binary uh, representation of this number. If two of them are the same, if let's say CI is equal to CI plus one, then what I can do is I can write down 2 to the power of C1 all the way to 2 to the power of CK as 2 to the power of C1, 2 to the power of CI minus 1. Then I can combine the next two. I have 2 to the power of CI and then also 2 to the power of CI. And then 2 to the power of CI plus 2 and 2 to the power of CK. I can combine these two to get one less term. So this would be 2 to the power of C1 all the way to 2 to the power of ci minus 1 plus 2 to the power of ci plus 1 plus 2 to the power of ci plus 2 all the way to 2 to the power of cn. And that means if I take f of this number 2 to the power of c1 through 2 to the power of C A ck, now I have k minus 1 terms. I have 2 to the power of c1 all the way to 2 to the power of ci minus 1. Then I'm combining two of the terms to 2 to the power of ci plus 1 and that gives me and this is ck is less than or equal to k minus 1 by inductive hypothesis. So this means in fact I prove the claim. Now if I look at f of 2 to the power of c1 plus 2 to the power of ck and 2 to the power of d1 all the way to 2 to the power of dl, this is at most k plus l, f of 2 to the power of c1 through 2 to the power of ck plus f of 2 to the power of d1 plus 2 to the power of dl. So what I did was I took two numbers m and n, I wrote them down in base 2, then I add them, I get k plus l powers of 2, that is less than equal to k plus l, which is equal to f of m plus f of n. The second one is if you take f of m n, that would give me f of 2 to the power of c1 all the way to 2 to the power of ck times 2 to the power of d1 all the way to 2 to the power of dl, which is f of sum of 2 to the power of ci plus dj. And that by what, what I just proved, there are KL terms, so this is less than or equal to KL. K is F of M, L is F of N. So this was M and this was N. And that proves the other condition. Now, of course, for every number, there are infinitely numbers that have that many digits. So if you look at F of 2 to the power of K plus 2 to the power of K plus 1 all the way to 2 to the power of k plus m minus 1, that would give you m. And this works for every k. So there are infinitely many numbers that give you the same output. And that brings me to the end of this solution. If you like this video, I would love it if you could leave your feedback by commenting below this video or simply hitting the like button. That would help me keep creating the content that benefits you the most. It would also help others interested in problem solving find this video. If you have any suggestions or problems, feel free to email me at mathcompetitioncoach at gmail.com. And I will see you in the next video.